and if you want to share it with colleagues or coworkers, um, et cetera, or, or review um, the webinar. But it'll be about half an hour, <clears throat> and I'll leave some time at the end for questions. Um, my name is Alexandra Kosiba. Uh, I also go by Ali, um, and I am a staff scientist at um, the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources at UVM, and I also am uh, the research project coordinator for the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative. So I'll be running through this webinar. Um, I'm also a dendro ecologist, so um, I am you know, know a lot about these types of data, but work um, in my job at, with many different types of data and projects. Um, my colleagues on this project are Jim Duncan, also um, works at the FEMC and the Rubenstein School. Paul Schauberg, who is a scientist at the USDA Forest Service Northern Research Station. Shelley Rayback, a professor here at the University of Vermont in the Department of Geography. Paula Murakami, a scientist at um, USDA Forest Service. And Chris Hansen, who is a technician um, here at the University of Vermont. So I'll be introducing some background on the Dendro Ecological Network we call the DEN um, and go through some of the uh, structure of how we've set it up. Um, and I'll actually give a tutorial of the site um, as well. And like I said, I'll leave time for questions um, at the end. So feel free to put those in a Q&A box. All right. Okay, so as many of you know, but some of you I saw are coming from all, all places in the United States, um, dendrochronology in the eastern forests is, uh, has historically been, it is difficult um, and complex. Um, and we have some unique forest characteristics here um, that make it a little bit more challenging um, for dendrochronology and dendroclimatology, which has historically been many of the uses of tree cores. Um, we don't have a lot of really old trees. We have high um, disturbance patterns, uh, specifically from human caused um, uh, reasons. So land use history is, is leaves a complex uh, uh, a scar on our forests that makes it very can make it very difficult to cross state trees. We also have um, mixed species stands, um, a lot of inter uh, tree competition. Um, so as a result, trees here have not been as useful um, for dendroclimatology compared to areas like the desert Southwest um, in the United States. And sampling methods and sampling strategy is really important to how you interpret um, the tree ring data and how you can successfully cross state um, between trees. So there's a pretty good history of tree ring research here in the east. Um, and this is not a comprehensive list by any means. So um, it was just a, a quick search I did the other day of dendrochronology and, and northeast um, or east. So as you can see, there's a lot of different um, types of research that happens in the area. Um, and it's a little bit different themed than um, dendrochronology research in other parts of the country. Um, and there has been kind of a renaissance of using tree ring data um, in recent decades to look at tree physi physiology and forest ecology. Um, so really, you know, common themes are disturbance patterns, forest management, uh, ecology, and we're finding that there are many drivers to tree ring uh, growth in this region and that it can be very complex. Um, and more recently, uh, researchers have been looking at um, how trees are responding to environmental change that we're having, um, whether that be rising CO2 um, concentrations or changes in precipitation and temperature. It's often been really focused on looking at um, the tree physiology and the, and the ecology of the species. And so we're realizing more and more that there's this increasing need for data archives and networks in science. Um, and this is a big thing that the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative does. We have a data archive. Um, and in this um, data archive schema, there's this recognition that there are, we're experiencing data losses. Um, and as people retire, 
um, lots of data can often be on paper copies under people's desks. And then you have storage and compatibility issues, right? So people have data on old floppy disks or even CDs are becoming obsolete. Um, so it's a really big issue as we're collecting more and more data about how to share these data, how to store them for long periods of time and how to have um, really good uh, metadata that can be transferred um, and used regardless of what type of data. Um, and there's an increasing demand for using large data sets. And that's really important as we have these big, spatially large issues like climate change that um, site specific data often needs to be compared to um, other areas. And the other um, part of this is that public databases really brought in the reach of science. So this can help um, really show the public and taxpayers um, that there is a lot of information out there and it can have a lot of uses. It can um, help with meeting granting requirements. And I'll talk about this um, later on when I uh, solicit um, more data sets for the DEN, um, that really that can help scientists meet those grant requirements that are becoming more common. <clears throat> so many of you know that we do have a database for tree ring data, the International Tree Ring Database, which is a wonderful resource and um, has been going on for uh, a number of decades since the mid 70s. And really this was established for um, dendroclimatology um, studies, um, but it has been used um, for some uh, dendroecology work as well. And um, there are something like 4,000 research sites um, currently archived and it spans uh, many continents. Um, but as I mentioned, this is a little bit of a limited purpose in that the scope was really for dendroclimatology. Um, sometimes the sampling scheme and design for those types of research projects really differ from um, what a, a dendroecological study um, would conduct. And so there can often be bias in the sampling design or there's not information on how the trees or how the sites were selected and sampled. And this has been um, proposed recently um, um, in Sullivan and Sank paper um, talking about some of these issues for um, transferring those data to ecological studies. And so there's been this recognition that we maybe need a separate uh, database, a dendroecological database. And as I mentioned that already that there is really no centralized data archive for these two types of data. And really uh, one of the big uh, variables or important variables that, that folks would like and me included is having a measure of diameter, whether it's DBH or some other um, measure of diameter. Um, and then also often these research projects, folks collect many different types of variables and they could be at different levels. So variables at the plot or tree or core level um, that are ecological and can't really be um, archived on the ITRDB very well. And then also another thing is including methodology. So sampling, design, how were trees selected, how were plots selected, um, et cetera. And as I mentioned already, this need for data preservation and data sharing, um, it makes um, those kind of uh, uh, sharing and, and cross, uh, 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 what do I wanna say? Uh, if, <laughs> Cross uh, preservation of data sets um, much more easily done um, that they can be do, done digitally and online. Um, and I'll I'll show you some details on that. But we allow for things like a DOI, a unique identifier for projects, um, and provide a citation for projects. So it makes it really easy for folks to find out who to contact um, for more information on the project and how to cite the, that that um, data set. And we hope that things like this, having a larger um, data set will provide context for smaller scale studies. So this often happens that um, we need to uh, see if what we're seeing on a small scale is uh, applicable at a larger scale. And you often need a lot of uh, tree rings to do that. And that brings us me to the last point is that tree ring data is very resource intensive. And so how having a, an ability to share um, these data can be really helpful and can make projects a lot more efficient. 
All right, so as we move forward with the development of the DEN, um, we had a, a group of um, collaborators here in Burlington. So as I mentioned, uh, the folks, the colleagues that I'm involved with this project on. So we have the US Forest Service Northern Research Station, UVM, and the FEMC are the three main collaborators. Um, but we also have funding and support provided by um, the US Forest Service um, in, as well as um, the Rubenstein School at UVM has um, provided support for our housing our database. And this project began quite a while ago with the idea that we needed a, a database um, to structure and store these data. And as we've moved on, we've figured out how that database will look, how it will be structured, and how data will be inputted in there. And this is a, a text heavy slide, but I really want to show some of the, uh, this is a little bit of the mission statement and the goals that we've set for the DEN. Um, and really the take home messages here are that we want it to be really flexible and um, to accommodate lots of different types of data. Um, and then it needs to be open access and free for everyone to use, as well as high quality and reliable. So that gets into actually the data quality restrictions we have. And then we hope that having this new um, resource will promote some investigation, syntheses of data, um, and leverage data in many different types of way for maybe other uh, types of projects that the original investigator didn't intend the data to be for. Um, so it can, uh, leverage data into many different uses. And we also sought to implement the best available standards for this archive, which includes the tree ring data standard and ecological metadata language. And I'll talk about those a little bit here in the uh, how we've organized the DEN. So the DEN is really based off uh, the FEMC's data archive. And if you haven't seen that, um, we have a, a pretty robust data archive that's been in effect for um, a number of years. We have lots of different types of products, projects and data sets archived there from stream water sampling to air quality measurements to um, soil um, measurements. So a lot of different types of data that has to do with forest ecology in the Northeast. And we use this uh, established structure to help structure the DEN. And we selected, as I mentioned, data standards. So we're using TRIDAS uh, tree ring data standard. This really allows um, us to, or a user to when they can download this file, TRIDAS file, it allows um, that to be used in other programs. So it's a really standard tree ring format. Um, and we are using ecological metadata standards. And this allows, uh, this is very flexible. It allows uh, metadata to be um, uh, constructed for a variety of different types of data. And it's supported institutionally. So the long-term ecological network um, uses this data standard and it's compatible with um, data one, for example, that we are a member node. The FEMC is a node, member node. So these two um, data standards allow for um, easy exchange of information and that we hope the goal is that these data will be stored and readable in perpetuity. And we created a nested structure that follows um, uh, forest inventory programs like the forest, the FIA program, forest inventory and analysis. So it's a nested structure in that you have a project within that plot, within those trees, within those cores. And I'll show that when we get to the, um, the website. We also provide quite a bit of documentation. And again, I'll, I'll show you examples of this, including methods. And we have a stringent data quality um, in that all um, tree cores need to be cross-dated to the best of the PI's ability. And we also have a completeness indicator that tells the user um, how much information is in a project before they download the data. So the cross-dating documentation is actually available if the PI or um, the person um, uploading the data provides it. So those can be in Cofetcha format or R code or other versions um, that folks use. And a key um, requirement is that we uh, include 
dbh or some measure of diameter for cross sections or cookies um, and this allows for the calculation of carbon wood volume production etc and we allow for other variables at um, various scales so they can be um, excuse me they can be at the plot level the tree level or the core level so this allows um, for this, the inclusion of things like soil cation measurements or um, measurements on the tree level such as vigor or dieback etc and then core level maybe measurements like sapwood area for conifers we also provide a data management template for grant proposals um, this allows a pi per, um, per, uh, preparing a, a grant proposal to use this template put in the um, uh, information that is um, pertinent to their project um, and submit that along with your um, grant proposal. And like I said, we pro can provide DOIs and we can also embargo a data set for two years. So this allows a PI, if you haven't published a paper from the um, data, to uh, store it on the DEN without making it publicly available. And I'll show you a couple examples of that when we get to the website. And uh, one big part of the den already we're seeing is that it includes species and age classes of trees that we don't commonly see um, on the ITRDB, for example. All right, so we are going to move over to the den. I guess I could, are there any questions thus far before we move to the, to the website? <clears throat> And feel free to go to this um, website if you want to poke around yourself. So this is what it looks like. Um, you see it's, it's nested in um, the FEMC uh, data archive. So if you click on this, it brings you to the FEMC uh, main page. Um, and the landing page we have is a map. Um, and you can see this is what we currently have for um, projects and data sets on the DEN. But I will say that it's not limited to New England and the Northeast. Um, geographically, we haven't set limits on the DEN. Right now, we've focused on this region because, well, that's where we all have data, um, but also because of our funding. But um, like I said, we are not limited um, in this region. So you can see that you have a couple different options for searching. Um, the map allows for um, zooming in to locations. And one part of the DEN is that folks um, provide location information, which can be a plot a GPS location, a transect, or even um, some uh, projects have tree locations. Like you can see this, this is one of my projects. It has tree locations. And when you zoom in, you can actually see the locations of the trees. And if you click on this, it actually brings you to the uh, to information about that project and you can quickly scan and see if it's something you'd be interested in or click on it, which will bring you to the project page. We also have an option to list if you more if you like browsing. So we can have a couple different ways to browse um, for data sets. So first we have it by species. You can see here it's alphabetical by scientific name, but you can also jump forward um, and look at a certain species. Um, we have the option to group by state and perhaps down the road we'll group by country, um, would be very cool. So if you want to look at New York and see what sorts of projects um, are coming out of New York, you can do that. And you can also just list by project. So these are the project names just listed um, if you wanted to look for a certain project specifically. So if we um, wanted to look at a specific project, you can see that we have the title, a little bit about the project is here, including when I mentioned this completeness indicator, which tells you that 100% uh, of the data has been uploaded, files, which include things like COFETCHA or R code, um, and that metadata questions are complete. And you can see not all projects have, a, well, there's various ranges in completeness, um, and usually that has to do with, um, you know, one aspect such as like COFETCHA files haven't been uploaded. You can quickly see that. You can see the span of the chronology, the species included, and the states it's located in. And then if you click 
here, more information pops down about the project, including objectives, um, what, how many trees, cores, and plots are included, who to contact, that would be me, and a description, a more detailed description. So this allows you to look through if the methodology and the objectives um, would meet your requirements for a project you'd like to use. And then you can actually go to the project and opens up in a new tab. And you can see here that again, there's a map that is dynamic, so you can zoom in um, to actually look at where the plots or trees are located. And a lot of the same information is here, um, including a data license. So this project I've published from it, it's available freely and open to the public. And you can see publications. And one um, important part of the DEN is we have project metadata. So we created some questions that folks can answer in a free form way. Um, we also are uh, going to have a few drop down options um, that are standard answers if that's easier for folks. Um, but that gives you information about how the plots and trees were selected, if um, cores were um, excluded for any reason, and that can help folks um, figure out if the project of the data set is applicable um, to their to their um, objective. So you can see here we have this is a project info then we can go to the tab that is a plot data and you have a little snapshot here so you can see um, um, some information about the the plots if they're available you can also download. You can go and look at tree data here so again, a little snapshot of the tree data. And you can see some other um, variables have been included here on the tree level, so vigor and dieback. <clears throat> and then you can look at raw core data and you can span, see how long, how old the trees are. Again, this is only a snapshot of the first 10 rows. And so you can download those all individually or you can go to download data and files. And again, you can download those um, three levels of data here. You can see we have the TRIDAS um, format, the individual COFETCHA files. So if you go here, you can see all the COFETCHA files that have been listed. And if you give, pull this drop down list, it will tell you which species and plot it corresponds to. Um, and that was one thing we adjusted the DEN as we added new projects um, to accommodate folks that cross state across neighboring plots, say they have um, plots that are pretty close together, they might cross state um, for multiple plots. So in that case, there would be a listing of multiple plots here. But one really nice thing is you can actually download the full project information. You don't, this is optional. If you want to provide this information, you can. <clears throat> so we will download that. I see it's waiting, here it goes, and it downloads a zip file. And you can see here that um, there's a zip file that includes the core plot tree and stats information, as well as a TRIDAS file and uh, a metadata document that Jim and I wrote that outlines um, some of the details on this, what the variables mean and what form they come in. So we have that um, provided um, for um, with download. And I will say that um, we are planning on um, adjusting um, what variables can be included. So we're gonna have an option that when you upload data, you can actually select, oh, I have plot, I have soil data at the plot level, or I have um, tree vigor data at the tree level, and that uh, um, a template will be produced for you. So that we're gonna have an option for lots of different types of data that can be added to these projects. So that's an example of um, a project here. If we go back to the catalog <clears throat> and we select um, group by state, and Maine, I wanna show an example of a project under embargo. So this is Dave Carter's project um, um, in Maine. And if you go to the project page, you can see there's no download data button here. And if you scroll down, it says data license data is available upon request. So you can email um, 
the um, PIs here, um, but there was listed an embargo date and some information here about that embargo date. But that is the point at which those data will be open and available um, to the public. So there's some other um, information here um, besides um, how, uh, listing projects um, and about section um, that gives a little bit of background that I've already covered. Um, contributing data, um, and this is where the data management template is housed, um, which looks like this. And we've written this for really, um, it follows NSF um, format for data management and uh, a PI can um, edit the document as you see fit and with a brief description of what type of data you'll be archiving on the DEN. Um, it lists the folks I've mentioned that are involved with this project and contact for more information. And um, one last thing I wanted to show was uh, another way to find projects, which is really um, uh, a nice option, is the search function. <clears throat> So you can do things, a simple keyword search here. Um, there are also advanced search options that allow you to um, use multiple criteria like species, crown position, or if you wanted to select for um, cores that span a certain number of years, if you were looking for a certain uh, range of ages. Um, and so for example, if we put calcium here, for example, example, uh, it pops up these three projects that have calcium um, involved in their um, research. Whoop. And if we do something like, say we want to look at sugar maple, intermediate sugar maple only, we can, um, we uh, are given this project. And what's nice about this is we actually can download a data subset. So if you're only listed, interested in um, intermediate sugar maple, there's just 60 trees here. But again, you can download this and you get the information on um, that, those um, intermediate sugar maple. And you can see, well, looks like it's producing some co-dominant ones there. I will figure out why that's happening, but that's, you're at least getting the selected um, project that is, um, has sugar maple of intermediate crown class. And again, the metadata is provided here, um, the same document I showed you um, earlier. So that's some of the options you can do for um, searching um, and get a data subset if you were only interested in looking at um, certain criteria. So as we add new projects to this, um, we are hoping that this becomes more robust. We have lots of different species, different locations, um, and as it gets bigger, it becomes more useful. All right, I'm gonna switch back quickly to the PowerPoint um, and uh, talk a little bit about um, contributing your data um, and then uh, open up to questions if there are any or, or comments. Um, so there's a lot of benefits um, to sharing your data. Again, data store, long-term data storage, meeting granting agency requirements, but it also can increase your citations, visibility of your projects, and extend those data um, to other uses. We're hoping as the DEN grows, it becomes more useful um, for a variety of different projects. So the criteria, obviously tree ring data, but those can come in many different forms. Um, and we uh, need some sort of coordinates, uh, whether that, however the sampling design um, was performed, transects, plots, et cetera. We need a cross section or tree diameter, and we are limited to cross data chronologies. And we can accommodate other data at various levels, as I mentioned for example, and that's only a small subset of the types of data um, that can be accommodated. So if you're interested in archiving data for a limited time, <laughs> we're offering to archive it for you. Um, we are trying to get more and more projects on the DEN, so we are offering this service. Unfortunately, due to our funding, we are really prioritizing data from the northeastern U.S. kind of into the eastern U.S. Um, uh, 
because of our funding from uh, uh, the Forest Service. We are working on a web-based interface so that PIs or technicians can add data directly. So we have this option on our FEMC archive um, and we will have this on the DEN as well. And basically you'll have a login, you'll log into um, your account and you'll be able to um, upload data or edit things um, as you see fit. And we're hoping that will be available probably spring 2019. So if you're interested in um, archiving some data, again, this is um, kind of a limited time opportunity that we can devote um, resources to helping you get your project online, you can email me directly. And I'll provide you with a template for some of these criteria and what is um, what is required. So you can see here, we have a few things that um, we have um, required, um, but really to have a complete project, you need to provide um, all this information. All right, so let's see what we got a couple questions here. Um, Amy Hessel, um, can data be readily downloaded um, using a widget or FTP? Um, not at that, not at this point, but that is something we could consider if that would be useful. We hadn't, um, we hadn't, that hasn't been something we've talked about, but we're, we really appreciate having some, you know, if that's something that could be useful, um, that would be great to consider. <clears throat> um, Peter Brewer, is data verified before inclusion? Um, right now it is, um, we're doing that, it, uh, we're having a criteria that it must be cross-dated um, and we recognize because we all work here in the Northeast at cross dating here in the Northeast, sometimes there still can be um, issues and there's a little bit of a gray area in what one person might uh, cross date and the other person, but it's to the, that PI's best ability. So we, that's why we, we ask for cross dating documentation. So COFETCHA or R code or other program where you cross dated that information so that um, if a user wants to use those data, they have that available. So then that the user can make the assessment if the um, data have been cross dated to their um, uh, level or if um, they had concerns about that. So we're leaving that a little bit up to the user, um, but we that's why we'd like to provide all that information so that the user can make those uh, decisions. Um, there's a question about, uh, will it be possible to download multiple projects fulfilling certain requirements at once? Yes, that will be, um, and I can show you that uh, for that example I did of Sugar Maple Intermediate, had there been multiple uh, projects that had intermediate sugar maple, those would have all been um, binned into that one zip file. So you would have uh, extracted a, um, a CSV of plot, tree, and core that has any um, trees meeting or any data sets meeting those criteria um, in one file. So that is kind of one of the things we really re recognize is um, really important when if you have a sugar maple plot and you want to see how does the how does the growth of my plot compare to growth in the rest of New England, um, you want to access all the sugar maple uh, tree ring data out there. Um, there's a question about can you handle plot nesting? plot, subplot, sub, subplot. Um, <clears throat> we don't have that infrastructure right now that hasn't come up in any of the projects that we've already archived. Um, but one of the processes we've been doing as we archive more data is adjusting the infrastructure of the DEN to meet new, um, new data sets or, or data structures that we uh, encounter. So I, I mentioned the example of, we first only had one cofetcha file per plot and species, but when I did start archiving some other folks' data, I found that sometimes people um, cross-stated across maybe elevational band. Um, and so we needed to have a way to ha pair a, a cofetcha file to multiple plots. Um, so that might be something we can accommodate. Um, I'll definitely, talk to the, our, uh, the rest of the folks working on the IT side of this and see if that's something we could, um, we could do. Um, one issue, the ITRDB data that we might 
want to avoid is duplicate IDs. Um, I guess I'm not quite sure if that means duplicate IDs for trees or cores. Um, if it does one thing that our structure, our nested structure, there must be um, matches and you can't have duplicates. Um, so within the tree file, there must be the same plot nomenclature as in the plot file. And so then you have a unique tree ID. And then within the core file, um, again, those must be uh, uh, connected to the plot and tree data um, with a unique core uh, ID. I don't know if that answered the question. Amy, if that didn't, please um, for ask, ask again. Uh, someone said, I don't understand the limit time offer. Um, so the, uh, I mentioned that there's going to be um, a user interface. So that would be um, that a, a PI or a technician would um, would actually log on to the DEN. So you'd have a, your, a log on and you go in and there would be a user interface, a management portal um, that you would actually upload the data. And so we have already, we have templates. So you'd actually can download a, a Excel file and you can put in your um, data in that. So the plot data, tree data, core data. Um, we're also gonna have the option that you can upload tree, uh, tree ring data in a variety of different forms, like Tucson format, because I know it's a little bit of pain going, getting that into long form. Um, and so this is really that we're going to do this for you, and it's really time intensive to take somebody else's data and project and, and understand how um, the nuances of it. It's really much better for the PI um, to do that work themselves. But as we're trying to get the DEN up and running and we don't have this user interface at this moment, we're offering to do this um, for you because we do understand how tree ring data is set up and understand some of those nuances. So this is really based on our funding. Um, we don't have limitless funding for this uh, project to, um, to really be uh, managing the input. So that's really, it would be a uh, kind of uh, system like our FEMC archive that everyone contributes to it and manages their own data. And there would not be a cost to that. Um, there may be down the road, we've talked about that, if, if folks still need, uh, after we have a user interface, if folks still need help or prefer to have us do it, we probably would need to um, have a cost for that, but we have not um, come to that point yet. So it would be free at this point. <clears throat> um, do you have any plans to contribute ring with data to the ITRDB? Um, <clears throat> we have talked about having uh, um, not contributing because I think the uh, structure would be so different, but that it would be uh, at least linkable. Um, we were uh, been talking about having just a simple uh, another tab in the den that links to other um, databases and data sets. And perhaps there is the um, possibility to have um, it be searchable across um, those platforms. If that is not something we've um, gotten to yet, we're still really in the setting up the den, getting more data um, into it and um, getting the proof of concept. Um, can you update data after five years uh, if the DBH was remeasured? Can can you update the project? Yes, and that's a really great question. Um, or for monitoring projects, this might be um, something that's encountered. And yes, we have this option on our FEMC data archive that you can version data sets, and we'll probably use that same structure. So what would happen is you'd maybe you've gone out or found out there was issues with your data set. Instead of removing those data, we don't allow removal of data. It's one of our, our tenants is data preservation. Um, so that you'd add a new data set or maybe you're appending, you went out and select, collected micro cores to get another 10 years of data that you could append those data and it would have another version. Um, can supplementary data to explain cross seeding decisions also be added? And could you talk about the DOI assignment prospects? Um, so yes, we have the option to add, um, add other data. Um, so you can do that. So things like, um, yes, yeah, supplementary information, readme files, things like that um, are great to include. Um, we can't, it's hard for us to um, uh, require that or structure that in a way that, um, it would be, it's just, it's allowed that you can upload different files. So we can't really set limits on that, um, but that, that is definitely an option. And adding that stuff just makes your data and your project much more usable to a range of people. The more information you can provide um, and be more transparent is great. Um, the 
DOI assignment prospects. Um, I guess I'm not totally sure what that question is asking, but um, how it work is that a DOI um, can be assigned a unique identifier um, for each data set? Um, and I don't know if that really <laughs> answered the question, but um, if you uh, further ask that, Ruben, I can try to answer that. Um, can information be included um, related to wood anatomy that affects, yes, environmental events? Yes, so we can um, uh, um, include uh, variables on the plot, the tree, and the core level. So say you did um, late wood density, early wood density, things like white rings, Kevin is asking about um, various things. That's, that is, um, in, we're working on ways to make that easily includable um, right now. Um, we can basically accommodate anything that has that, that follows into that hierarchy. And then if it doesn't, um, you, it can be added as supplementary material. Oh, geez. Can you <laughs> briefly describe the technical components? What database management system, et cetera? Is it all open source? I am not an IT person. I didn't develop the database. Um, so I'm not sure I'm the best person to talk about that. Um, it is all open source. We are using um, standard licenses for um, data. So we will have it be uh, data is um, preferred to be available. Um, I, I think maybe that question is asking about the database structure. I really um, am not the person to talk to that, but I can get you, in, Peter, if um, you want to email me, I can get you in touch with our um, IT person, um, Mike Finnegan, and then uh, Jim Duncan did a lot of the IT work on this. So I, they would probably be better to talk to you about that. Um, question about plot with 20 different species located with DBH. Um, Jim, maybe we should uh, uh, talk about this. We can, um, I, we could, should, can email and um, we could talk about the sp specifics of your um, data, but it sounds like it could be a good fit. Um, but we can, let's, we can email individually about that. Okay, there's a question about, it'd be great to have the DEN data points visible on the ITRDB. Um, and that I think would be possible. Again, I'm not, um, this is something we've talked about um, from an IT perspective. Um, and that's something we were considering having some sort of, at least that it was searchable that, that if you were on the DEN you could say, oh, look at the ITRDB for um, some cores that might fit your criteria. And we haven't, we haven't quite gotten that far. <clears throat> um, well, you have a web service to access your, access your holdings. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, I totally understand that question. Um, if you can uh, clarify, Wendy, um, I'll try to answer that. There may be the options of the question about plans to provide programmatic interface so we could automate data extraction. Okay, this would allow the ITRDB to provide linkages. That is something that would be great to talk about, um, Peter. Again, I might get you into contact with um, the folks working on the back end of this, um, but I think that would be a great um, thing to do is to have some connections between the two. Um, so that would be a great conversation to have. Okay, so I guess there's another question about using it programmatically. We honestly, we haven't, that's not something we've um, talked about yet. We're really at the stage of um, getting the database structure in a way, and we still um, have some things that we want to uh, adjust on that. Like I said, having a user interface, um, having some other options for adding various variables to the plot, tree, and core level. So we haven't uh, talked about, um, a programmatic um, way to access the um, the den, and that might happen. Again, we're we are working on pretty limited um, resources on this, um, so that could be something that um, happens down the road. But I'm not sure. It's from our standpoint, we have some other things that are more a priority. But that's great. That's great feedback. Okay. I went over by quite a bit, but there was a lot of questions, which I appreciate, and I. Um, 
did my best. And if there are some more questions, please email me um, and we can um, move forward with that. And, I'll, and I appreciate any comments and suggestions you all have for improving the DEN. Um, we're really excited about it. Um, it's been a long time coming and a lot of work, um, but we really need more data um, and a range of data to make this um, a more robust resource. So we really appreciate um, any folks that would be interested in sharing data or providing um, additional comments or suggestions for how we could um, alter the database. Okay, another question just came in, the societal benefits of the database. Um, we, so a couple of things is that um, I think in just general databases and networks um, make data transparent. Um, so this can help with um, justifying uses and justifying science. So um, taxpayers and society sees that we have this robust um, use of data and they could actually download and look at the data themselves. Um, and then also um, the sharing of data and um, using data um, in a number of different ways. So leveraging data that's been collected for one purpose um, and another purpose. So I think um, those are great uses and also just creating this network um, of people that are interested in tree ring data um, and connecting folks um, in that in that use. <clears throat> All right, another question um, about keeping it working on the long term. Well, we at the FEMC is um, going to be responsible for maintaining the den. Um, and so we're hoping that um, that as folks have a user interface that they can manage their own data, um, the resource intensiveness of it goes down, but there will be um, some level of, we'll have to um, check the uh, um, DEN periodically um, and, and things like that. Um, so this is part of what the FEMC does. We have these other data archives. We have lots of different um, types of databases online. Um, so it's, it's something we're very well versed in and we do this for many other um, sites we have. Like I said, the FEMC Data Archive has been running for much longer, has way more um, data and projects um, and that is, is, it runs pretty well. All right, well, thank you very much for um, joining the webinar. Um, I hope it was informative. Again, we will post this um, webinar online and, um, and uh, for your review, if you wanna share it with colleagues um, and please poke around the den. Um, let me know um, what you think, if you have any comments or questions, or if you would like to share your data um, on the den, please contact me. Um, thank you again, and I hope everyone has a lovely day.